And okay, so um, it's 2.01 p.m. I'm going to go ahead and read and call us to order um, with the extension of Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting, which I'm calling to order of the African Heritage Reparation Assembly, uh, Monday, September 11th at 2.01 p.m., will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. And I am going to quickly do a sound check. Again, this meeting is being recorded um, and I will begin with Dr. Shabazz. So yes, I can uh, hear everyone and, and I can see everything. Excellent. Okay. And Dr. Rhodes. I can hear and I can see everyone. Wonderful. And Hala. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Very Excellent. good. Thank, Thank you. you. What was that, Hala? Oh, just thank you. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, well, thank you. And Jennifer, can you hear us and be heard? Yes, I can. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. Um, and Jennifer, before, I just wanted to check with you quickly. Um, the meeting minutes on the agenda, are those up to date? Are we um, in a good position to go ahead and adopt those or accept those? You're muted, Jennifer. <laughs> I only do this like 10 times a week. Um, are you are you guys, is this your last meeting? Next week will be our last meeting. So we could wait to So we should wait. Okay. Sure. And then I can include these ones too. That sounds great. Um, so before we get started today, um, I just I wanted to take a moment to acknowledge um that some folks, um, there are always some folks that we care about who need our prayers and our love and support. And um, you might have some folks in mind. And I wanted to take a moment uh, for us just in silence um, to say a prayer or an intention or anything that feels right for you. Um, to express your support and love uh, for those folks who may need it most right now. So this is just a, a moment of silent reflection, and then we'll get started. Okay, thank you for that and um, let those prayers continue throughout the day. All right, I'm going to um, start by calling our first period of public comment and I'll take a look here. Okay, so I'll read the public comment statement. And if you'd like to make pu public comment, please use the raise hand feature and I'll bring you into the room. During the public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your name, pronouns, and residential address. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair based upon the number of people who wish to speak. The AHRA will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment, but we will certainly be listening closely. Um, so if you'd like to make public comment, please raise your hand. Okay. 
All right. So I am not seeing any public comment. So I'm going to go on knowing that we'll have a second period later in the meeting. And I just wanted to quickly share that uh, I, um, along with Dr. Rhodes, joined the Jewish Community Center of Amherst yesterday. Uh, they had an excellent presentation on reparations. Uh, and we had the opportunity to share uh, with the group. It was well attended um, by Zoom and in person. And we had the opportunity to share a little bit about our findings and uh, the sort of upshot that I uh, that I took away is the commitment by that group um, to continue to support this reparative justice work in Amherst. And that begins with uh, a, a group of folks there uh, who would like to be present on October 2nd when we uh, present our report. And um, there were other suggestions about that as well. Um, Dr. Shabazz, I received your uh, remarks after the program had started. I would love, if it's okay, I'd love to share them with Devorah and, and Jeff, um, but we can, okay, excellent. So that was, that was great. So I'd like to get us started um, by just uh, coming well, to consensus. Could I, could I ask if, if Irv has any any reflections as Please. well? You know, that, that really means everything to have um, faith-based communities and, and other uh, partners coming forward from the community, um, keeping this work alive. Uh, Dr. Rhodes, is there any uh, observations or reflections you have? Um, there are two, uh, and thank you for asking. Um, the opening um, film video by the rabbi uh, giving background on the stolen bean was extraordinarily effective. Uh, she was a very powerful, powerful rabbi. Uh, I was really profoundly affected by her uh, remarks and her presentation on this uh, the stolen being the, um, the similarities to reparations for Jews that were received by the Jewish uh, by Jews from Germany in terms of what happened in uh, Germany that was an extraordinary thing I, I really hadn't realized that that, that had occurred uh, but she gave great historical context to reparations and reparative and restorative justice. Uh, unfortunately, I had to leave without being able to make any remarks because my um, number two grandson uh, called me with an urgent request to, for my attention. And as we, you know, as regards any other teenager, it was uh, full of sound and fury, yet signifying nothing. Uh, anyway, it was a. I, I felt really good about the whole thing that I uh, participated in. Is that film available and or, or anything else from yesterday? That's a great question. And yes, Dr. Rhodes, thank you for, for sharing that. Um, so this was Rabbi Sharon Brous, who gave um, this talk on reparations. And I have asked Jeff and Devorah, um, who are the co-leaders of the reparations com committee at, at the JCA, if they could share that. It's actually in the stolen beam curriculum, Dr. Shabazz. So um, if you still have that, though, it may have been added since you uh, participated, but I believe it's available on the JCA's website. Just looking right now. Um, There's one sermon I've, I've definitely heard in that, and it, and it is powerful. I don't know if it's the same one, but uh, um, but the actual discussion yesterday, that wasn't recorded, was it? You know, I think they may have recorded it, but it was not open to the public. It was for uh, JCA membership. So I'm not sure we we might be able to um, to get it. And I'll, I'll ask that especially question, and especially if they have any any questions over the little uh, the little notes that I that I had uh, prepared and sent. Absolutely. 
Um, okay, so I'll see what I can do to get that. And I agree that um, having their support is critical. And so I, I'm I'm looking forward to what one of the things that they were really excited about um, is that we have recommended the stolen beam as part of our report. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think that was a really, really great uh, piece to report on. Good. Thank you. All right. So I want to take us through so that we can come to consensus on a couple things here, um, starting with the report cover. Um, and just give me a second. I'm going to pull up, <clears throat> pull up some things here. Share my screen. All right. Can everybody see my screen now? <clears throat> okay, excellent. Um, so this is the report cover as it stands right now. And this was put together again by my mother-in-law who's worked on our graphics um, and who did that wonderful photo, <laughs> photoshopped photo of us. Um, and so I love your feedback on this. If it, it, if it hits the mark for you, if there's anything that you would like to see changed, um, this date will obviously reflect the date that we publish the report right now. We just, we have that in as a placeholder, but very open to your suggestions. And this ties in actually to the design that she themed for us in the report itself, which I will show. Actually, let me show that now. And then that way you can see how it all flows together. Okay. So you, you can see here that um, she's changed, you know, some of the colors um, and then we start to add some visuals in here and there is still time for us to, uh, for individual members to provide any sort of visuals that you think might be uh, good to include in the report. Uh, but this just gives us a sense of, um, you know, the look and the feel of the report uh, based on this theme. So you don't have your voodoo picture in there yet? Not yet. <laughs> I'm going to pull it up, though, to show everybody. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> but that's that will go in uh, here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, what's funny about it, Dr. Shabazz, you would appreciate this. Um, the picture that I took uh, for you was the one where you're with Matthew um, uh -huh. at the Juneteenth event. Uh -huh. And she, in her first draft, inclu included Matthew in the picture. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I <laughs> That is too funny. <laughs> That's good. That's good. So I told him that Very last. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, oh, another really interesting um, piece, by the way, that it may change, but um, as I've been meeting with the Coleman family, um, and of course their recommendation is related to 26 Woods Court, they pointed out to me that their recommendation was on page 26 of the report. And they actually asked me if we planned that. And I wish I, I, I wish I could have told them we did. Uh, but that was again, um, the universe or whatever you like to call it. Um, so this is how the quotes will look with these, you know, in these um, boxes here. And so, I am very open to any feedback. We are open. We can make any kinds of changes that you might like to see. Um, if you have additional visuals, um, we can certainly uh, include those. So I'm going to stop. I have to tell you the overall, the visual standard and and things uh, relative to this is, is really quite quite beautiful, quite professional looking, and and uh, do really appreciate it. Going back to the to the front cover. Uh, I am uh, very, you know, partial to uh, that the kind of historical uh, landscape uh, of the town that is that is presented there. One thing that um, occurred, and and then the 
the seal is the one. The seal is a real question mark. You know, I haven't um, shared my own um, perspective about the seal and its relationship to the uh, the seal that the Harvard Law School dropped um, in terms of its relationship to the royal uh, to the royal family, the enslavers of Belinda uh, X or Belinda Sutton. Um, who is one of the historical cases of reparations that we have documented and was in the original article by Ta-Nehisi Coates. Uh, there is a linkage of our seal with the seal of the former uh, seal of, of Harvard Law School, which is related to the royal crest, uh, the crest uh, and seal of the, of the royal family. But that's another point. Um, that uh, uh, I just would question its placement kind of in a, in the center of things um, there. The other um, issue is I I wish I was found myself wishing for something that reflected the the African uh, uh, American presence, uh, historical presence in in Amherst in again in a in a larger sweeping landscape kind of way like this image here. Uh, I've seen various individual images um, and, and you know, but to find something that is as sweeping like this, that sort of symbolizes the, 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 the physical presence of the entire town from a moment in time, we just, unfortunately, that's part of the harm and, and that we're responding to, we don't have very much uh, there isn't anything visual that I can think of um, that reflects that. There, there are certain individual families, individual moments, um, Civil War veterans, and 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 so on uh, that we can see certain images of, but but nothing quite um, like this. I thought about the the mural in the West Cemetery because that is a very inclusive one and does have uh, and, and includes some very important aspects of the black presence in Amherst, but you know, I didn't, I didn't recommend it because um, in some ways to me, it's, it, it, it's just one kind of glimpse of the town uh, that's not as, as historically um, poignant as this one showing the whole town kind of in the Valley. So all that to say, I, I will, um, you know, send a few things that, come to my mind, not so much for the cover, but but perhaps for inclusion at some point, but uh, but overall to really to really praise the uh, 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 the wonderful professional work here. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Shabazz. And if I could ask you a follow up, um, do you see an opportunity to include something short in the report? about the town logo. So yes, we're including it here because it's the town of Amherst and this is the current logo as it stands, right? Yeah. But is there an opportunity for us to then say something about that in the report somehow? You know, I I, I have something written up um, and, and it sort of reflects on both the, um, what I have reflects on both the, the name, the seal, and just various ways in which the, the very projection of the town is so colonized, is so marked by a certain, um, uh, um, to be blunt, a, a certain anti-Black um, representation of, 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 of the town. Um, from the name to the seal, um, it's, you know, if you, if you just pull the curtain back a little bit and, and, and engage the history, it's really quite staggering the uh, how it how it we're, we're linked uh, by, uh, from the name and the seal directly to genocide and to slavery. So yeah, I can send that on and, and folks can 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 maybe think about it, but it doesn't matter if it's in this particular uh, report or not to me. Um, it, it's it's an ongoing challenge for us, as as Sandy Darity said when he came and gave his talk. It's an ongoing challenge. Will we ever really um, deal with the way um, from the name and the and this and this current seal, um, the town continues to be linked to uh, to slavery and, and and genocide. 
Okay, wonderful. Yeah, that if you would send that along, I'm I'm sort of envisioning we might be able to include a final note in the report, and okay. that final note might uh, tie tie what what you have. We could tie what you have into that. I'll do that. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and just wanted to check in, Dr. Rhodes or Hala, do you have any um, comments or feedback on the report cover or the style of the report? at this time? Dr. Rhodes, I see you've unmuted. I can't hear you, so I just want to make sure. Are you trying uh, to? I, no, I, I don't have any comments on it. OK. And Hala, how about you? Are you, um, so we, I guess what I'm asking is, do we have a, a general consensus on this theme and this style um, to move forward with? Um, we do. I'm in agreement with um, some of Dr. Shabazz's comments around bringing in a larger, wider scope of some of our Black history, and also it's not as captured or present. And then I'm really curious about the crest design, but right now it's Amherst um, emblem. So yeah, that's not a lot to offer, but that's my two cents. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> uh, wonderful. Okay. All right. So I'm going to take this down. Talk to share. Okay. Great. So the next thing I have here for us to think about and review is, uh, well, let me, before I go any further, let me just give us a, another sort of um, overview of the timeline here. Um, so by the end of the day today, we will have the most updated draft of the report ready to send to you as an assembly here. We sent the last report out to, as we spoke about in our meeting, um, several people who gave some um, really good feedback. Mostly all were Black residents, including Dr. Jemison, who was a, a former AHRA member, and she really um, gave some excellent feedback, which we've incorporated into the report. Dr. Barbara Love gave some excellent feedback. Um, uh, Ms. Pat, there were there were lots. There was actually a, a a great response to the call for feedback, which is which is excellent. So what we've done is highlighted in the in the draft what is new language from the last time that you've seen it. So you can sort of go right right to that and and review it. Um, so the idea would be. Uh, Basically, this week is our final review stage of the report, and um, we will come to our meeting uh, ideally next week prepared to approve the report. Um, and then we will be ready to publish the report uh, with about, say, a week and a half um, advance to the town council meeting. Um, the town council president has agreed to a special public comment period on October 2nd for our presentation. And so folks will have the opportunity to listen to our presentation. Um, and I hope we might be able to have a comment period before and after. Uh, the hope is that uh, folks that the that the report will, being that it was published a week and a half prior, have had the chance to review it um, and and be um, if they if they would like to comment on it, have that opportunity. Uh, so we have a couple things that we need to fill in, one being the acknowledgements uh, section of the report. So I have started a list of people who I think and organizations who I think that we want to acknowledge in the report. Uh, and instead of going through that with you all now, I'll send it out. And if you have anybody that you would like to add to that, um, please send that directly to me and to Jennifer um, only, please. Okay. And then um, we also have here, um, I'm just realizing that. Um, okay. So the the last piece of the report that we haven't really discussed as a committee is the charge, um, the successor body charge. 
And I had a really interesting conversation that I wanted to share with you a little bit about um, just to kind of get a sense for, I mean, I think the charge has a template that we will be following and I'm just trying to find, um, let me just, if you could just give me one moment and I'll try to find that. Um, Here we go. All right. So this is what I'm about to show you is actually the charge for the AHRA. So this is not, um, this is not, I just want to give you a sense of what is included in a charge. <clears throat> And I'm, I think all of you have seen ch these charges b before, um, but we have sort of the basics up front uh, that indicate the number of voting members, um, the term of the appointment, um, you know, all of this kind of, you know, stuff. And then we come down, we have composition. Um, this is kind of, this is really just to show you like that it's basically a one page um, charge that outlines what the purpose is, what the composition is. And so I wanted to share that in this conversation I had, um, there was encouragement for the AHRA to consider its composition um, and consider that having at least one person on the committee that has uh, had some experience with, I guess, managing a fund is the most direct way to say it, managing some, some kind of fund um, or a similar type of fund uh, to the fund that we have here. And so I wanted to see what people's reactions if any, were to that particular recommendation. And then also if there were recommendations beyond that uh, for the composition and how specific we might want that to be. There, there are... I'm, I'm aware of a couple of models that we might want to consider and I got to get my thoughts together. Um, for instance, uh, the United Way of Franklin, Hampshire, uh, which I was on their board of directors, had a uh, person or persons who were the fund managers for their funds, uh, but they were not uh, a member of the board of directors. And, uh, and but they actually, uh, they were the fund advisors hmm. uh, for that fund. And, and it was, you know, it's interesting, obviously, that they were not board members at all, but they had experience in managing funds and advising on funds. I mean, yeah. Yeah, well, if we had that person, it'd be great. Anyway, um, uh, uh, that's one model, and the other model, obviously, is you could you could directly have a person on the committee uh, who ser served in a similar function. Uh, and the other third one is you could subcontract that out mm -hmm. to a group who does fund management. Mm -hmm. I see Jennifer's hand is up, so maybe she's going to add to that. Jennifer. Yes, I was going to. You could also have someone like a subcommittee that does finance only, right? That's really interesting because one of Dr. Jemison's uh, recommendations was that the makeup of the successor body be large enough that subcommittees were possible. Um, so, for example, a subcommittee 
for to to work on um, a private fund or a subcommittee to work on, like Dr. Shabazz was saying, um, getting institutional support or whatever it might be. So you're suggesting that there would be a subcommittee that would deal with the financial aspects of, of the fund. Yes. Okay. What do other folks think about that? And Dr. Rhodes, I really appreciate the three models that you just um, suggested as well. I think that any one of those is, I mean, if there was an actual member, that would be interesting. You know, if there was a member that, and maybe there would be reason to have it in one of the other models that you suggested. So I'm really curious. I mean, there, you know, there are, there are groups out there who have their funds managed by fund managers that exist in this valley, that exist in Northampton and in Amherst. There are people who that's what they do. And, and there are nonprofits who uh, avail themselves of their services. It doesn't cost anything. So that mm -hmm. can happen. That's a possibility. I mean, so one of the ideas is we could write into the charge that, uh, whether it be through membership, whether it be through uh, a, a you know a, a subcommittee that with its focus on that or or some other way um, that we recognize and, and encourage that the makeup of the committee includes some expertise on that. Uh, but I, I want to see what Hala and Dr. Shabazz have to say about that, if anything. <laughs> No pressure. <laughs> I, I do agree that it makes sense to either have a subcommittee or someone on the committee. Um, yes, be financially savvy and know the ways of interest and inflation and the things that I don't know as much about. I know that when Dr. Rhodes mentioned an outside manager, I'm glad to know there are some that do it for free because um, I know some that take like 10% and I wouldn't want us to to go there. But if there are some that, for, but then I'm like, we're, we are also in a municipal, uh, a government. So I don't know if nonprofit, like I don't know that interaction. Mm -hmm. um, if we could, yeah, maybe find a way to keep it in-house somehow, I think feels in my gut. In Amherst, just most related, but that's why I, you know, I'm a little, I, I process slower than others because the million things come at me, but that's my initial um, response. Awesome. Yeah, I share that. Uh, Dr. Shabazz, do you have I anything just, to I add? I just want to be clear that we're, which, what fund are we referring to? Uh, the municipal fund only in this case. All right. So, and this is in the context of the report where we're uh, on funding, where we're talking about the accelerated, the acceleration idea and, and other aspects towards getting to the 2 million. Is this right? No, no. This is simply um, in the composition of the charge for the oh. successor body. Okay. Um, this person recommended to me or strongly encouraged us to consider the possibility of including in that composition a person who has some expertise in managing funds such as this one. Um, it, you know, and I just I thought it was an interesting recommendation. Well, and it, you yeah. Know. So let me say this first of all. Again, I'm still of the mind that a lot of feedback and things that we have, all of this is public records. I I still think it would be great to make, to have some expanded appendix that allows for all of this information to be preserved and to be, you know, available for future folks who will, um, you know, look to the report for guidance for the ongoing work. My own view on the charge to the successor body is I'm not sure how directive we ought to be about, um, well, so we're talking about the makeup of the group and the numbers of the group and, you know, envisioning the work of the group. Um, and, um, you know, the 
and and whether as part of the makeup, you know, how much of it is is sort of functional areas like this person is will have expertise in that or that person will have some expertise in in some other area. Um, and 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 then there's also question of the relationship of of identity and um, of of our standards, you know, the lineage, the the um, racial identity and the um, residency. Well, I guess it's all going to be residents of Amherst, but you know how much some of that should guide the makeup of the group. But um, but to the specifics of um, recommendations around uh, like areas of expertise that are reflected. Um, yeah, I, I guess I don't have a problem with uh, recommending uh, that one of the, the members be someone with that kind of financial or fiscal um, experience. Um, I guess I hadn't thought so much about that because my feeling is, is that the investment and the leadership over the, the fund itself under general municipal governance, you know, finance kind of governance. And there really won't be, um, it, it's more on the disbursement end of it than on the, um, you know, the investment end of it that we're likely that a successor body would maybe have much to do with it. Um, but I'm, I'm so I'm kind of trying to adapt my thinking now to to the idea that maybe um, there is more for the successor group to be engaged with around uh, the question of finance and financing. So, yeah, I'm. I guess I'll continue to still kind of get my head around it, but uh, but it is an it, definitely I can say at this moment it, it is an interesting suggestion about that being an area of expertise um, that that you might want to define as you know the role of one of the one of the members. That that's it's a very interesting idea. Yeah, and I think you know you just. Um reminded me that this person spoke about the disbursement and uh, a person who has experience um, like funding programs, for example, in a community. And some of the recommendations that we have made are regarding leveraging our funds with, for example, another committee's funds. So like we might want to have somebody on the uh, committee that has experience with grant writing, for example, um, or completing applications that the CPA would find acceptable, for example. Um, it's like this person would uh have some skills or experience in uh, knowing how to disperse and sort of leverage funds uh, with the use of other available municipal funds. So um, okay. I'm going to kind of like try to think about all of those pieces, including um, Dr. Shabazi identity and lineage standards um, and and if, if you have particular thoughts, um, th that feels a little more straightforward. But if you have particular thoughts, anyone on the committee, please do send them to me um, so that we can um, get that sort of more um, firmed up. Okay. All right. So, and so there's kind of those two pieces of homework, that homework, <laughs> homework. <laughs> uh, we've never assigned homework, have we? Um, but those two pieces of take home um, to think about the acknowledgements and then the the, the pieces of the charge. Um, and then the final thing that I wanted to uh, talk with you about is the press release. Um, so, uh, whether or not our wonderful communications director was leaving, um, I think that we would have probably wanted to have some agency over the press release. Um, and of course, with Brianna leaving, it also makes that more 
urgent matter for us to consider. Um, so we have drafted, we have a first draft of a press release and I wanted to bring it up to share with you. I'm sorry it wasn't sent to you in advance. We were sort of working on it today before the meeting. Um, let me see here. Okay. Hmm. I had it pulled up and now, sorry, just one moment. Oh, here we go. All right. So I'm just going to um, allow us to take to, to take a couple minutes to read through this uh, while we're here. And while you're reading through it, I'm going to send it to your emails as well. So you have it. And um, keep in mind, right now we have one quote in here um, by Dr. Shabazz. Uh, and I wanted to ask you um, if, so my thinking was, that we would have a max of three quotes, um, if that many. And in looking at the California reparations report um, in their press release, we used that as a template for this press release. And Congressman McGovern came um, up pretty strongly for me as someone that we might want to uh, ask to be included, to have a quote included. Um, given that he uh, supported our work, and then particularly because he wrote the letter to President Biden, um, that he might have a quote to offer us. So why don't we just take a couple minutes, read through this, and I'm going to go ahead and send it um, all to you now in your email as well. So you should all have it in your email now as well. Could we try and change uh, right there at the top from that first sentence the AHR report responds to these needs with a with a structured approach 
um, that commits us to do. So uh, deleting Marshall's to uh, an and. Well, it's just bringing it down to commit. So deleting the all we can do in our town. Oh, I see. Okay. And and just get, okay, perfect. Sorry. That. Boom. That commits us to do all we can. Um, this is awesome. <laughs> I love that. So um, I know Dr. Shabazz is reviewing it and Hala and Dr. Uh, Rhodes or Jennifer, if you have any um, any thoughts on this or if you need me to scroll back up, just let me know. I think I was wrestling with the the first in line in, in terms of the Amherst residents that have ancestors enslaved. First in line versus like prioritized first. I don't, just the word smithing right there. If it's, everybody is fine with it. Cause I know we're doing concentric circles. So maybe that's why my brain says line circles, what's going on. You're absolutely um, right. Yep. Please but, go on. Yeah. I don't necessarily, no, I, I don't, I don't necessarily have the answer, but that, that just jumped out at me. Um, because although it is linear, it's also nonlinear, but, and it, it's a, that's a small, teeny little. Edit. Yeah, that's, yeah, that, that really, because we're not, where is that? I'm trying to, I'm not good at finding things on the spot. Where was that? Um, it's close to the, it's close to where the FYXX is right above the, the X, right here. Um, Pursuant to, it begins with pursuant to. Ah, yes, and, right here. Yep. Okay. Should be for, yes, where I have it highlighted. Um, yeah. Yep. I think that's a really, really good point, Hala. And um, it could be the focus we could say, because if we're thinking circles, right, it, it, the center circle is the, is the sort of focused, uh, most focused, uh, but yes, that we can think about that and see um, how we might change it to better represent the concentric circle idea. I don't know if anyone else has any. Yeah, I agree, especially the should be first in line. It sounds like the, you know, the soup line or something. Something. And, uh, and, and so, yeah, if we could get more of the, the centering concentric circle I, idea in there, that would that would be more in line, more consistent. <laughs> With our, in line with, our, with, <laughs> with our report. Yes, indeed. Okay. <laughs> great. That's great feedback. Um, and and so, you know, think this is I think something that is important to to read it again, please, and just see like because this is an energetic, it's all energetic as well as physical, as well as all of the things. And so, um, but it's possible that some people will only read this. <laughs> so we have to really consider that if somebody is only reading this, have they taken away what we would want them to take away? Um, have they understood and can they in, sort of internalize what we have uh, said? Um, and does it reflect our report? Um, so I'm going to stop that. And I just, I also wanted to see if folks had any other, so we have used various channels in terms of press, right? We have a whole press list. Um, we've gone, you know, through the town. We've ha we have a whole bunch of people that we send things out to. Um, I'm just wondering if you have particular thoughts like, okay, when we approve this report and we're ready for it to hit and it, it's going to be published. What is there a particular order we want things to go in? How do we want this to flow out? Um, and 
you know, you don't, that's something you can touch base with me about at any time, but I just wanted to plant the, that seed. Um, uh, let me water that seed a little bit with this sure. and um, the engage Amherst page. Um, I would think that would be one venue for, um, you know, put as a site for not only because we could always put a link on our regular town of Amherst page, but I think if we could put something there uh, on the Engage Amherst page that also then um, provides maybe some space for for feedback and um, and I would say as well if the members are in agreement with this, um, you know, I, if somebody wanted to take a deep dive. And they could go into the town's uh, records, to the bios of of all of us that were submitted to uh, town manager Bokelman. But maybe we would just want to have some link, whether in the document or in the Engage Amherst page, where all seven of us and uh, our our um, as well as our uh, you know supporting staff. Um, uh, from the DEI office could just have a, a sentence or two if folks are, are agreeable or interested in that, that, um, you know, highlights uh, who we are in relation to the work we've, we've um, in regards to this work of the, of the AHRA. I think we would be honored to do that for you all since we've been here since day one, you know. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's a really wonderful idea. Um, Jen, do do you so with Brianna um not there, who will be updating the Engage Amherst page in the in the interim? Um, I think that that is a whole other story. So Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll touch base on that, yeah, at some point. But that's sort of why I'm I'm thinking we want to do as much as we can on our end. Um, I love the idea uh, that Dr. Shabazz has. Um, if you would like, you know, to, and again, I'll send an email out requesting that feedback, one to two lines, um, and and however you would like, whatever you'd like to include in that. Um, and then I think. Um, I loved the idea of having the ability for people to share feedback, a space for feedback. I think that's really, really great too. Um, so, all right, I'm going to just um, pause and open up a second period of public comment since I do see we have a couple more attendees and um, I will, since we have new attendees, just quickly read the statement again. And if you'd like to make public comment, please use the raise hand function or pound nine if you're coming in by phone, pound or star nine. Um, during the public comment period, uh, the chair will recognize members of the public when called on. Please identify yourself by stating your name, pronouns, and address. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair based upon the number of people who wish to speak. Uh, while we will not engage in a dialogue, we will um, certainly be listening closely and can oftentimes answer uh, questions, clarifying questions. So if you'd like to make public comment, please go ahead and use the raise hand function or the star pound nine. Okay, so I'm not seeing any hands. Um, and at this point, uh, again, just to recap where we're at here. So I will be sending to you by the end of the day today, hopefully the latest version of the draft report. Um, it will probably be the closest to finished um, as we'll get. So please do thoroughly review it. Anything that's been added since the last draft um, will be highlighted in yellow. And then I'll also be sending out um, some other 
pieces of uh, where I'll be looking for feedback from you that we talked about earlier in, in the meeting. Um, and next week, ideally, we will come to our meeting prepared to vote on our final report. And then, as I said, we'll decide if we're ready to, to let it go the following day, perhaps, or a day or so after. And then we will be presenting to the town council. In terms of the presentation to the town council, I think I mistakenly said we would only have one last meeting next week, but I think we will want to meet one final time before the town council presentation. I started working on a slideshow and uh, of course um, we'll want everybody to be involved in the presentation to the town council um, on October 2nd to whatever, um, you know, the, the desired uh, participation in that is. So are there any other questions, comments, um, announcements or anything, anything else? And Dr. Rhodes, since I don't see you, I just want to make sure you could hear, you could still hear me. Okay. Maybe Dr. Rhodes stepped away. Um, I'll check in with him. So any other questions, comments? All right. Well, wonderful. So onward we go. <laughs> I'm going to adjourn the meeting at 2.57 and thank you very much and we'll see you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye everyone.